Copyright is a set of laws that protects different kinds of intellectual creation. Since the 18th century, it keeps a balance between private incentive for creation and public access. Copyright protects the authors by making sure they get compensation for their artistic, literary, or scientific work for a certain period of time, after which the work falls into public domain. But recently, copyright extension and scope have become stronger and more complex. Also, the different territorial characteristics of copyright laws make it difficult to negotiate between countries. And this is why, in the creative economy, a set of laws, originally designed to protect authors, has turned more into a sort of currency. So, how does copyright affect the cultural sector? Consider this graphic explanation. Right in the middle, there are the original authors, the core creators. Around them, the producers, agents, programmers, and distributors. These intermediaries assist you in your creative work, helping you make it possible and improving the way you reach your audience without having to bother with tasks you often don't like or don't know how to do. Sometimes creators themselves accumulate these functions. You might find an artist who is also a producer, an actress that is also her own agent, but hardly the creator becomes a distributor. And when they are, that means they probably became superstars somewhere along the way. This means that in general, core creators exchange their copyrights for those intermediary services. Because of their low income, they usually have a weak bargaining power, thus ending up with the smallest, if any, chunk of revenues generated by their own creations. Recalling the excessive supply of creative workers, we can see that there are far more creators, producers, agents, or even programmers when compared to distributors. However, it's this thin layer of distributors that has more powers to enforce copyright and control revenues. This means that, instead of protecting authors, copyright has mostly been used by major businesses to control cultural production and who can have access to it. So, are artists condemned to be either under-recognized poor workers or rich, powerful superstars? No.